Everybody to another great episode of Just Create. I have an excellent guest coming on to this show, all talking about uh, excellent marketing strategies, basic uh, ideas, and maybe kind of flip you around a little bit on how to actually attract new customers and where the platforms need to go to be able to get those new customers. So, uh, without further ado, let me go ahead and introduce you to my new guest, Eric Schellenberger. How you doing, buddy? How's it going, man? Thank I'm you, doing man. very well. No, thank you for coming on. And uh, Eric, uh, for, he's the owner of Bard Marketing Basics. Um, he's He's been in this group of people that I've been kind of associated with. And and I'm going to tell you, Eric, it's you. I've been wanting to get you on the show because of not only your 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 knowledge when it comes behind marketing into a business but not just any business but restaurants and bars which is to me i think it's already hard enough to start a business but to go and actually be successful in a restaurant industry is a hundred times more difficult so um i i feel like you're always the godfather i feel like if i went to a restaurant i said hey eric sent me you know, they'd be like, oh, all right, here's a new, t- here's a table for you. Let me, you know, you friends with Eric? All right, I got you. You know, like, so, so thank you for coming on board, man. Kobe K calls me the, the mayor of Scottsdale. <laughs> I, I can't quite uh, live up to that, but I mean, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So it's it's yeah, the Scottsdale scene is definitely a lot where a lot of your your marketing is at, and it's yeah. a, and it's a fantastic place to go. So, um, just to get started off, tell us. Uh, a little bit who you are and, and what you do a little bit more than what I just kind of went into. But uh, tell us a little bit about that and, and how you got started in this marketing and restaurants. Yeah. So um, I grew up in the, the restaurant industry and basically from 13 years old and on, I've been in and out of it kind of my whole life. Uh, my mom owned the food and beverage department at a local ski resort that I lived in in Park City, Utah. I grew up there. And grew up a snowboard bum. So when you're a snowboard bum, you kind of your life revolves around snowboarding and you have to like eke out a living, making minimum wage and do what you can. So if you snowboard all day, I had to, I had to work at the resort to get a free season's pass. I had to work at, at restaurants and bars at night in order to make a little bit of money. And rent was a couple hundred bucks a month shared between five people. It's one of those flop <laughs> house situations. So grew up with that. And uh, it, I basically got the only jobs that I could at the time because uh you know, very little, ed- I mean, finished high school, got a little bit of college and little education, not much. And uh, was able to go from that into the various bartender, you know, server, man, all that stuff and got up to, uh, got into the automotive automotive industry for a while in um, off-road stuff. And then after I was kind of over that, back into this, um, I became the marketing director at Toby Keith's. I love this bar and grill. That whole no chain. way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Places and, and music venues and the whole thing. So I was the one guy who oversaw 13 locations at the time. And it was funny because I got, I got in there because of a buddy of mine had a connection and I got in there. The whole reason why I got the job is because they needed a flyer done. And I was like, well, I know Photoshop. I'm like, great. You're the guy. So I did this flyer and they're like, Hey, you want a job? Sure. So the, this, this went from like, we need a website done. I was like, okay, well, I know website design. Cool. And that got into, we need a video done. So I had to learn video editing and then we need to do our, up our social media. So I got more into that and so on. And everything that, that I had to learn, uh, it was, it was because I was at the time I was like, wow, man, they're gonna get rid of me. If I don't know how to do all right. this stuff, I don't have as much value. So I learned everything, <clears throat> everything I possibly could about not having a team of people that do this marketing for you, but I was the team. So Long story short, I learned a lot of stuff. And eventually when I figured out that Toby Keats was more of a Ponzi scheme than a real business. Is that what happened? I, I was wondering. Yeah, yeah okay. it, was, it was so sketchy. And when I figured out what, what they were really about, I was like, oh boy, I see what's going on here. So gotcha. uh, really long story. The short version is I found out that my direct boss um, at the time was, uh, he ended up being a main member of the Lucchese crime family in New York out in Arizona under witness protection. So 
it wasn't even a legit business. And I was like, okay, I am out of here. So that was in the media recently. So that's why I can even mention that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Wow. So got out of that, went to work for some places in old town Scottsdale in like the entertainment district and the whole, uh, uh night club kind of vibe. And that was, that was, it was cool. It was very, very competitive. And that, that over there, it's like, it's, it's the most cutthroat 50 yards of street that you can imagine more so than Vegas, more so than LA, Miami, whatever. It's just an insanely, uh, um, competitive row. You've got 13 bars all back to back, all competing for the same customer. They're all basically carbon copies of each other. It's the same exact bar. Right, right. Over over. So that was, that was where I started to get, uh, to realize that I need to do my own business because I started to be as needed. I was, I was more competitive than the next guy. So I was like, okay, instead of just everybody there, I just, uh, uh, kind of made the analogy last night about this is the marketing departments in all these places who are killing, by the way, they're, these are places that are doing, doing the most business per square foot in the history of the state of Arizona. I mean, it's, it's insane business and their marketing strategies are horrible. They're just like, mm -hmm. everybody looks and sees what the other mm -hmm. guy's doing. And then they just copy that. So my analogy was picture a room full of people all taking a test that nobody studied for <laughs> and everybody's copying off each other's papers and all the answers are wrong. <laughs> right, and right, right, right. That's what it was like. And I kept seeing that over and over because I was the only one that did all the analytics and I did the research and I put data together. And I was like, wait, you guys, like, what we're doing isn't working. And now the public is being flooded with all these bars doing carbon copy bars. Now they're doing carbon copy uh, uh, marketing techniques. Mm -hmm. They're all the same stuff. Like, why don't we switch it up? Why don't we rethink this? And then what I brought data and analytics to the table and they're like, mm, yeah, we appreciate it, but we're going to keep doing this. So At that point I was like, wait, why? I'm like, well, this is just always how it's been done. That's okay. Well, how it's been done, it doesn't work now. That may have worked a year ago or five years ago or whatever, but we need to evolve. We need to adapt and pivot. We need to do what's working today. Yeah. Well, I, we're just going to keep doing this like what we've been doing because we're comfortable. Like, okay, right. really? You're comfortable. Great. Well, <laughs> screw it then. And then I was like, you know what? I can do a better job. So I did. So I went out on my own, created my own company. It's been, it's been kind of brewing for a while. And then I finally got out there and a couple of years ago, I started taking my company seriously. Um, quit my, my job. I was doing both. Quit the yeah. job. Um, I've been full-time in my company for a while and it's been uh, very, very successful so far. Well, I, I, I got to tell you, I, I've, I, I met you the first time, I want to say a couple of years ago over at the Meltdown in the Desert um, yeah. and, 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 and been just been following you and seeing the, the, just the, the, the commitment that you've been putting towards it and seeing how much growth you have done over these last couple of years is it really is. Uh, to be honest with you, I thought I didn't realize it was just it was that new. I thought to me as someone looking from the outside, it looked like you it's been around a lot longer than that. Right. So, um, so congratulations on that, dude. Like, like it's, it's uh, truly impressive. Now you opened up a lot of different areas there when you were kind of discussing that I want to, I want to tap into and, and, and the first thing I want to kind of tap into and I find very interesting is you said you had to learn a lot in, in the video editing, the graphic design, the web design, you had to learn all that. And yep. did that come naturally for you? Was that something that you've always liked doing or is that just something because it was forced upon you and you had to do it in order to survive that you you've had a, you learned how to create or have you always been interested in that creation area or that's that type of mindset? Because that's question one. And at the same time, you you're into analytics and data and numbers, you know, yeah. so like those are two completely obviously opposite set of mindset, you know, how did you like, was that an easy involvement for you? Tell me kind of like your experience when it comes to creating on that in that type of yeah, environment. That, you're right. That's completely left brain, right brain stuff. And I grew up uh, it, as an artist background. Like okay. I was, I was, I had an art scholarship to the university of Utah and I was very much a creative, um, you know, very much a, um, I was, punk rock dude growing up and I was very <laughs> anti everything and not social at all. No a little thing. anarchy, a little anarchist going on. Yeah, yeah. I was just that guy a hundred percent. And so, uh, when I started thinking about, well, wait a minute, nothing that has to do with that really can make a living. 
So that's when I kind of started getting serious about this. So at 35 years old, I was a non-paid website design intern at some oddball company in Tempe. And I'm 35 years old, like what the hell am I doing with my life, man? And am I really gonna make no money? I made zero dollars for an entire year. And uh, so this whole time I'm learning website design, which is a, you know incredibly uh, mathematical and it has nothing to do, I mean, it looks artistic, but behind the scenes, it's not it's artistic no, at all. Not at all. It's writing code and doing all that stuff is completely the opposite. So I'm struggling with that. And I'm just like, man, I just don't, I j it just not jiving. So right. I, they're, they're really patient with me and they kind of had, they weren't paying me. So I was able to stumble my way through that. After a year, I was like, okay, now I kind of get it. I can put a website together. I can, you know, kind of stumble through the whole process, start to finish, make it happen. So uh, I did that. And once based on that, that's kind of that in the Photoshop thing. It was what I said uh, earlier about the Toby Keith thing is the only reason why I got that job. Yeah. And so, yeah, it is, it's very much a trying to force the other half of the brain to get with the picture and kind of get, get on the same page. Um, when interesting of going back to the Toby's thing, when mm -hmm. I quit there, I had so many skill sets that I, I got a call from a guy, a mutual friend back after I quit. He says, man, he goes, I can't even believe they let you go. I can't believe that they let you leave. And I quit, but yeah, they, he goes, they replaced you with five different people. Mm -hmm. So they replaced me with, there's no one guy really that can do all this stuff. So there was like, they have, the, they hired a, hired a web designer, then they hired a graphic designer, then they had a video editor, then they hired the social media guy, then they hired the guy that books the bands. I was doing all this stuff. And he's like, yeah, their, their salary just went from whenever they were paying you, which was minimal to right. like, hundred grand plus a year for all these people to do this stuff, damn near 200 a year. So, um, yeah, that was, that was, uh, when I kind of realized I had more value than the next guy. Yeah, dude. I don't think you would like, I, if you weren't doing what you're doing right now, I honestly have, you're too qualified to go anywhere. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I, I don't like, that's just, um, you're right. And, 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 and even, even in my video production industry, there's, you know, everyone, obviously, when they hire a video production company, they think they're kind of getting like an all in one encompass one person. And that's just even in my industry, it's not the way it is. I mean, editors are editors, cinematographers are cinematographers, right? There, there's there's lighters, gaffers, uh, grips, the utilities like there's just there's a position for each individual type thing, an audio, you know, and so it's really extremely impressive on the amount of skill talent. Cause I'll be honest with you. I've tried to start my own website and even in today's environment, like even in today's uh, technology or uh, advancements when it comes to pretty much WordPress and, and, and you know, your other sources it's it's like a drag and drop type of thing. And you have a website, you know, and that's yeah. <laughs> like, I can't even do that. <laughs> You know, like I don't even want to learn. Like I paid a web guy to do my website and but all the code that's in, that's involved in it. You're right. It's it is. Uh, I I don't know. And that so that kind of reads me like the word that I keep on reading here and the word that keeps on coming in the 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 the, 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 the drive that you came is just ruthless. So how how is this ruthless? How did this ruthless come about? Yeah. So that was um, I actually had this shirt made for I just wrote a book on restaurant. It's called restaurant and bar marketing. It's called something that boring. I'll get into that in a second, but it's it's all SEO keyword related stuff. So that's why it's a super broad right. term. Anyway, so I got this this shirt done for the book cover that I had uh, that I had shot, and the the whole premise behind this is to be ruthlessly self serving. It's a it's a lesson that I do that I talk to the staff of the bars and restaurants that are struggling, and the staff that are clients of mine that have bad service or the service just don't care. And the servers are just, they're not happy with themselves. And let's be honest, if you're a server or a bartender, it's probably not your end career. It's probably you're doing something, something you're doing right now in order to make ends meet. Right. I get it. Right. So it's, it's something that, it's a lesson that I teach them that if you're ruthlessly self-serving, that doesn't mean you're selfish. That means that everything you do in your shift or in your life or whatever, it comes back to serve you. Everything that, that you do should serve you. And helping other people serves you. Being a nice guy and helping others and doing what you can to make their lives better serves you. So everything comes back to that whole thought. And my whole talk to them is you need to optimize the money you make. You need to make as much, as many tips as you possibly can during that shift. When you have a shitty attitude, can we swear? Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right. 
yeah, when you, you have a, <laughs> a shitty attitude during a shift and <laughs> your tips go down, that's not self-serving. That's just being lazy. So my whole talk is about having about appealing to the one thing that the staff cares about, which is their wallet. Okay. All right. Yeah. No. That. That's. That's. <laughs> And it's so funny is that 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 mentality and that that what you're talking to servers, that's something that can be applied to any industry that you're going into, anything that you're doing. Um, I, I love that. I, I absolutely love that. And when is that book? You say you've been working on that book. When is that book going to be? Yeah, it's in editing out? right now. So it should be on Amazon in about 45 days or so. We're about halfway through the editing process, which takes forever. Oh, my God. And yeah, I mean, I'm I'm one of those complete control freaks and the guy that's like, can we do it now? How about now? How about 10 minutes? Now? How about? And I'm like, dude, okay, mellow out. We got it. And so uh, anyway, it should be, uh, I'm, I'm thinking 45 days-ish on Amazon. Oh, fantastic. Well, we'll definitely put that out and I'll put that out. And it, once I get out there, I'll definitely put a link on the on this uh, YouTube page and, and all my stuff that we do when, I, when they send this out. I want to definitely get that out there for, awesome. for everyone. You. No, you're very welcome. So being in the, in the marketing industry um, and, and especially in the restaurants, I kind of want to really kind of dive into, it's really interesting. A lot of people keep on thinking they need to run Facebook ads. They need to run uh, the, the Instagram, Snapchat, uh, you know, so on and so on. And you're really saying like the, your customer, new customers are not there only people that follow you and only a percentage because they're always changing their algorithms. You know, it's a, it's a pay to play type of thing, but yep. you're saying there's different platforms out there in order to get your message out there. Kind of talk a little bit about that mindset of like, don't go over here. There's more over here. Right. <laughs> type my, my, uh, the analogy I make is the fishbowl versus the ocean and your social media followers uh, and your, your databases of people, the information, the emails you've collected, all that stuff that people have heard of you before, that's a fishbowl of people that know you exist. They've probably been in the door. They know all about you. They know you're an option and they see your stuff once in a while. Maybe they don't, but they're aware of your existence. So these are the, 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 the places that are more tourist driven and places that are in a, like a heavily uh, a tourist driven economy. Right. That stuff's worthless. Because if you're, if I fly into a new city I'm unaware of, am I really going to go on Facebook and Instagram and just scroll randomly until I happen to find a restaurant that happens to be close, that happens to be something I like, that happens to be open? There's no way. So all that fishbowl information goes out the window in most economies. So when I say get out of the fishbowl, get into the ocean of consumers, the ocean is uh, all consumers. Whether they've heard of you or not, they're going to find you on three different ways. That's Google, Yelp, and TripAdvisor. Those three are where I put my clients. I position them as high up, as ranking as well as possible on those three platforms for that reason, because they're open to anybody and everybody finding them. Everybody is, this is why one of the things that I got away from the club scene in Scottsdale, because yeah. they were, they didn't get it. And they did just didn't, it wasn't one guy. It was like that whole industry doesn't get it. Is their approach is, okay, we pay a guy to create a theme party. And then we create a guy to make a flyer about the theme party. Then we have another person that puts the, the flyer for the theme party on social media. And then that's it. We're done. Next. That's their approach. I'm like, okay, well, have you ever looked at the Facebook insights and the actual numbers behind those? Do they work? Do they not work? What is it? What is the cost to put something to get to, for uh, that whole thing to be put together? And they're like, what do you mean? And what, what do you, what do you, it's like, they never even crossed their mind. Like, what does it cost to do that process? What is the return you got on that process? And every time people were like, why are you asking me this, dude? Like, why are you, where are you even getting this from? I'm like, <laughs> okay, okay, this is kind of business one-on-one. That's why I was like, you guys, enough with this. Cause, and I did the numbers myself. I was like, this is how much it's costing you. This is how much it, it, it moved the needle when we didn't do it to where now we are doing these parties. And it was absolutely a hundred percent money loss every single time. So when I went into my, one of my, uh, my, my last boss and I said, look, man, I said, you are, this company is losing money by employing me. And he's like, that doesn't make any well, sense. That's the first. Yeah. He's like, first time I've heard that one. And I said, I'm being totally honest. I said, this entire department is losing money. I don't want to be part of the problem. I want to be part of the solution. I'm going to quit. 
but I had, I still have a great relationship with them. They're great people. Right. And, um, I said, I want to bring you back on as a client of mine. So done deal. We did that. And now it's, it's a better situation for both of us. They're paying me considerably less. They don't have to pay me as an employee. They don't have to pay my insurance. They don't have to pay any of that stuff, which I'm happy with. They're getting better results and I'm making them more money being on my own. So it's a perfect situation. Wow. That's fantastic. And then, um, so before we kind of kind of go in a little bit even more into that, I, one of the things that I, I, I meant to kind of talk about, because you talked about how you worked for a year for free, right? And, and I, that resonates with me because I did the same thing. When I got in this video production company, I just volunteered at this, uh, or when I got into, into videography or cinematography in this space, I volunteered at a video production company for, I showed up 30 hours a week for a whole year, didn't get paid one dime, you know? And, and it was one of those things that I, that's how I was able to learn. And, and, and I didn't go to school. Like I was, I always like laugh. I, I don't laugh because they're, they're going to school. It's great. But like seeing like people getting film degrees and, and you know, like, Oh, I'm going to school for film. And I'm like, that, that was not ever a thing. Like now it's a thing, but it was never, ever a thing. Even when I went to school, there wasn't, there wasn't, a school for it. It was just people that got into the field, learned it from the ground up and put their hard work in. And, and, and that was, you, you start work networking with other people. You, you know, you, you do good work and then next thing you know, your name gets passed around and it just grows and blossoms yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, so like the, the fact that you worked for a year for free, that, that really kind of was like same track that exactly that I did. What do you like, what was that drive? What was that, um, ambition that 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 you just kept you going and 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 the fact that you know this marketing in and out and without having to really your education came from learning from reading from right i mean like i guess my question in all income is is how did you teach yourself and and become the expert that you are yeah so when when i learned web design here's why i kind of got into that is because when i was before i knew a thing about web design and i really didn't know a thing like like your average, you know, restaurant owner, why would they? Um, the web designers in general are the most unreliable group of people I've <laughs> ever come across in my life. They're all so bad. They do not answer the phone. They do not return an email. They don't return a text message. They disappear. They fall off the face of the earth every day. And it's insane to me. I was like, you guys, this is not that hard to answer the goddamn phone. Just be communicative, something. <laughs> and they're all the same. Like a hundred percent of them are the same exact guy. So. I got into that thinking, okay, I'm going to be the one guy who answers an email. I'm going to be the one guy who answers the phone. And so once I got into to, to, uh, web design, I've made the analogy a bunch of times. This is a long story, but the short version is it's, it's so hard to, as a web designer now, I was like, okay, I get uh, uh, why customers are frustrated with the designer. So I saw it from both sides. And to get to pry the content from the consumer is so hard because uh, they're just like, well, you're a web designer. I don't make me a website. I don't know. Like, okay, I need your logo. Send me your logo. Please send me your logo. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then a week goes by, two weeks go by. How's the website coming? Where's the logo? You know what? This is taking a long time. Yeah, it is. Give me the goddamn logo. Please. <laughs> I'm praying. Give me the logo. So this goes on and on. So there's struggles on both ends of that equation for mm -hmm. sure. I got out of the website design business because of that. Because I was, I was very responsive and I was the guy who did answer the email and answer the phones. But every time falls in your court consumer. And then they're like, yeah, I'll, uh, man, I just, just don't have it. I'm like, cool. Well, we're on hold until you do. Yes. <laughs> and then it was just, uh, here goes another month. I'm like, you know what? I can't do this. This is just the most frustrating, like a head butting contest of all time. So I got out of that. I do it a little bit for, for specific right. clients right, right now, but I try to not do it for that reason. <laughs> I don't blame you. There's, there's a lot of different things that I've gotten out of it's funny when I first started doing my business, I said yes to everything. Mm -hmm. It didn't take me very long to understand what I did not want to do anymore. <laughs> you know, you're like, I don't want to work with this type of clientele. Like that. It's just, it's just, uh, there's, a, I'm going to go and focus my energy over here in this, in this area. So I, yeah. I, I that's funny. Now kind of then now going back <laughs> to, to, we're talking about Yelp, talking about TripAdvisor, um, and it's funny cause those are the things that I use. And I love one of my, my favorite things to do is to go travel. I took my family on, uh, literally what we did was we took my family on a, uh, 
on a road trip. We went, we, we drove from Arizona all the way up to San Fran, just straight up to San Fran. And then we took our like two weeks, uh, taking our time going down the coast, uh, you know, the, the Pacific coast highway, just going from San Francisco to San Diego. And, and we didn't make any plans that we, when we left and we're on the road, we didn't have a room or we didn't have like, you know, uh, a plan where to stop. We just kind of, we used TripAdvisor, we used Yelp and, 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 Probably you know, Google. and Google and Google. Yeah. We used those three things to see where we could find a hotel, where we can find a place to eat. What's the hot spot? What's the best places to go to, you know, and how many of those people did you find on or look for on, on Facebook or Instagram? How many of those places you stayed at? Did you look at their profile? Zero. Zero, yeah. zero. I mean, the only time that I was on Facebook was me posting like and then and then it would tell you like, oh, you're in, you know, uh, you're in Carmel. And then, you know, tell me where your location's at. And then but that was it. But there wasn't wasn't like a massive either. I, I didn't look at anything. I didn't look on Instagram. I didn't look on anything like that. But yeah. um, it was all through Yelp. And so <laughs> how do people really capitalize on that? Like, I'm not familiar with like I'm familiar how to use Yelp as in as as a consumer trying to search for good go to restaurants. But how do you how does a restaurant use Yelp and in and, and getting there and then and then use Yelp effectively because I know there's got to there's always those people that are out there that are gonna try to like they have one bad experience or or they're just they're just people that are dicks, you know, and they wanna like put bad reviews on. Like how do they combat that and and like, how yeah. does Yelp used effectively and, and, and positively? I, I just posted a, uh, a, a response from, I reached out to, I don't know if you've been seeing my Facebook feed or not, but uh, just have, to actually. clarify our conversation, I am on Facebook a lot. I use social media a lot, but I'm a marketer. <laughs> I'm not a restaurant owner. Exactly. So that's the difference. That's why if someone gets confused, that's why. So um, I just posted something again today. Um, one of my clients got... Uh, on Yelp, you know, they can flag reviews and they can remove reviews. They don't, they don't see deemed as worthy of being there for whatever reason. So um, this one client of mine got over the course of six months or whatever they've been open, they got nine negative reviews flagged and removed. I did most of them. At the same time frame, they had 155 positives removed. So the media got involved. It was on the news. And they're just like, you guys, this is not, and we're looking through the, re the, the reviews and they're all legit. They're like, oh yeah, that, that person came in. I remember talking to them. They said they'd never been in the door before. They love the place. They said they're going to write a review, mention my name. They did. It was great. Got flagged. So they're not their friends and their family just propping them up. They're, these yeah. are real, real people. And they keep getting flagged and removed over and over. So anyway. They get on the news. I reach out to Yelp and I said, I want an official interview from Yelp. I don't want to speculate. I don't want to be the guy who's just bashing them for no reason. I want to know your official stance. Yelp got back to me this morning and they said, our guy is not available for an interview. So here's a bunch of canned answers to your, I gave him four questions that were like, why do you remove a review or not remove a, a review? Is there going to be an opt out in the future, which they said no to, unfortunately. Um, and questions like that. Like if you pay Yelp, it does it affect your star rating and, they were very copy and pasted answers, but at least I got an official answer from Yelp that I was able to, I put it on my website, I put it on my Facebook page. So uh, back to the question of how do I manipulate that? It's not as far as when I say manipulate, I don't mean by, you know, underhandedly getting rid of that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what I do is, is I respond <clears throat> to all the reviews on TripAdvisor, Yelp, Google, even Facebook reviews on behalf of my clients. So I'll respond to them and I'm in very close contact with the client too. So we discuss it. They don't have time to do it. No restaurant or bar manager is going to have time right. to go to all these platforms, look for a new review, figure it out, log in. They're going to forget their password. Of course, they're not going to be able to do it. And they're like, you know what? Screw this. So they don't do it. And that's 99% of them don't do it. So I'm the guy that does. And I respond to every single review, good, bad, and different. I thank their fans, which no one does that. It, it's so powerful and goes so far and people see that. Hey, that restaurant just thanked me for my review. Damn, that's impressive. Right. It's so simple and it, it's, it's so valuable and nobody does it. So that's, that's a very great niche I've found. And of course we put out the fires also. Someone has a negative review. I call them, I figure out what went on. Most of the times we screwed up and we're going to own it. And I'm going to, on behalf of the restaurant, I'm going to say, you know what, we, 
we dropped the ball. We apologize. Let me get you back in. Let me offer you a free meal. Contact me. Here's the GM's uh, information. Please give us another chance. So it's, it's just the best of both worlds, thanking the good ones, getting the bad ones back in, and flagging anything that could be flagged or removed. I know Yelp terms conditions very well, so I can flag accordingly. Right. But really, maybe 10% of them actually get removed based on terms and conditions. And uh, Yelp is notoriously the one that everybody goes to bitch. Yeah. Like if you're going to say something nice, you're going to say it on Google. If you're going to complain, you're going to go to Yelp. It's just for whatever reason, it's like that. Yeah. Uh, Yelp officially stated this morning that they don't get in the middle of, even if they know it's false, they, they don't get in the middle. They don't do not, nothing to do with he said, she said. They're out. You mean you mean they're not pulling like a, a Facebook and Twitter where they just ban you? <laughs> like, well, that's that's <laughs> funny. That. One of the reviews I did on on a, a video screen share I did about Yelp uh, last week was my own personal account, not a business account, but me as Eric, my personal Yelp account. All of my, um, hang on here. Yeah, no, that's been... all of my uh, all of my my reviews. I noticed that they're not showing up, and I I'm like, wait a minute. I know I reviewed. If I log into my Yelp account as a consumer. I can see all my reviews. I go through like a business here. I reviewed them. I scroll down. Yeah, there's my review. Great. I logged in over on the other screen, another browser as my girlfriend's account. I went to the same exact business. My reviews aren't there. I can see my own stuff. I'm the only person that can see my own reviews. So, but no one else is seeing it. No one else sees them. They're not factored into the star rating. They're not, they don't appear there. Under Amy's account, Every I went through back, I went through 10, 12 of them. Not one of my reviews was actually live on Yelp. So... Like, why am I even doing this? Like, what's the value to Yelp to me as a business or a consumer? And it was, I'm like, all right, I put that one up and, and uh, did a video about it last week. <laughs> I would suggest everyone to check him out. <laughs> go to his Facebook. Go to, what, do you have You have a website? You have a Facebook? Where, where, where is the Facebook is the best place to kind of yep. get and, these videos? Because they are, I, I do watch them. And, and I think it's, it's really, really, really uh, not only informative, but it, it you, you hit on a lot of those pain points. And, and I, my question is, is, and I guess before, like let me answer your answer, my other question, I guess I apologize about that, but Facebook, where, where else could people find you? Uh, bar marketing basics.com is my site. I've got a ton of content on that site. It's not one of those, you know, four page. Here's a paragraph about me. It's got hundreds of pages and it's got video blogs on a podcast, product reviews, um, everything you could possibly imagine that has to do with bars or restaurants. And uh, my Facebook page is, is just, I think it's at Eric Schellenberger. I'll spell that one word. I don't use my business Facebook page. Like the Bar Marketing Basics Facebook page maybe has 200 followers and I never use it for that reason we were talking about is that every business's page gets censored down so far that maybe 1% of your followers or fans actually see your content. So I don't waste my time. I suggest my clients don't waste their time either. That's fantastic. Now, obviously, you you're in marketing with restaurants, but do you see a lot of the practices and the things that you take? Because I feel like that you can, and I feel like the, the the principles and the the practices that you do in the restaurants is something that could be crossed over to any other industry. Have you looked into trying to go into other industries, or or I mean, I because I, I mean, be honest with you, like Yelp. I, I never thought to use Yelp for my own business. I mean, I don't know if that, you know, I know a lot of people just think of Yelp as a restaurant thing, but I think there's, you can go with other businesses with Yelp. Is that correct? Or am I, or yeah. am I wrong? <laughs> Yelp is very heavily uh, geared toward hospitality. So it's, it's bars, right. restaurants, hotels, vacation type of stuff, mostly. But, but yeah, any business could be on it. Bar marketing basis is, is on Yelp. No oh, one's okay. really going to be on there, but, yeah. but I do have a presence on there. Yeah. So, no, no, that makes that makes a lot of sense. But you bring up a great point about responding. I think in today's society or in today's digital marketing, call it whatever you want it is, Facebook warriors, you know, slash Twitter account, you know, it's amazing how far and how much difference it makes for a response when someone gets a response saying, and accepting ownership of something, of a mistake, right? Like you say, like, if it's our fault, you're like, we apologize. We want to make sure we do it right. Like that is a significant, makes it such a significant difference. And I know for me personally, that's literally happened to me where, where I made a complaint, like went to Hilton, right? I went to Hilton and I don't, I don't complain a lot at all. I really don't. I mean, it takes a lot for me to like care. 
like yeah. for you know if if, if something's a little off yeah like i don't i'm oh my god there's a little dust bunny in the corner like that's one star you out star that's it yeah you know fuck it <laughs> you know, this is horrible no that, that shit doesn't bother me but for whatever reason we, we stay at this uh hilton in la jolla and the the uh the, the bed it was just brutally awful like i don't know what it was it was broken or something it was just and then the ac wasn't working and and we try to get it fixed but like i we're like i don't think it got it fixed because it was just you're you know you got the humidity and your sweat and it just was uncomfortable mm-hmm. and i was like look so i, I just kind of explained that to them i'm like hey look the bed was this and they're like really they're like we just replaced all our beds recently let me go check it out. And then they like the, the the people from from the the uh, the Hilton. They, they they literally, I'm sorry, it wasn't Hilton. It was Hyatt. <laughs> Let me get that straight. It's Hyatt. So Hyatt, sorry, that's sorry, Hyatt. Um, but Hyatt, they responded with their uh, customer relations department, sent an email replying and explaining like, thank you so much for bringing this to our attention, you know, and, and please let us know the next time you want to stay at a Hyatt, contact me, you know, it, it was just, it was just like, oh, okay, well, thanks. I appreciate it. Like it was just, and that was the end of it. It was, I would never give a bad review. I would, I would always, I will go stay another Hyatt again. I mean, it just wasn't, but yeah. like it was, it was just that response. It, right, and for some reason, the, the the hotel industry gets it. They they're, they they always respond, and they're very on top of it. They're on top of TripAdvisor and Yelp and Google reviews like no other industry. Bars and restaurants are just not there yet. I don't know why. Maybe it's because their average uh, ticket cost or whatever it is, average price per consumer is a lot lower. They don't care. I don't get it. But I, I'm that's why I've discovered that niche and stayed in it. Uh, we stayed at the Hard Rock Hotel in Vegas. Um, I don't know, six, eight months ago. And we get in the room. It was an awesome room. They have the best looking, like, sweet rooms ever. And the, the bed was all nice, and there was a big stain right on the bedspread. I don't – it looked like it was like a drink spilled or something, but I was like, man, that's a gnarly stain. And so I know a lot of people that would have been like, oh, my God, there was a stain on the mat. This is the most disgusting place ever. One star. I hate you guys. Never coming here again. But it's not if there's a situation. It's how they handle it. So called down, hey, man, uh, could you guys swap out the sheets? We've got to stay in there. Like five minutes later, they're on it. Three people show up, two um, housekeepers and like a supervisor show up, knock it out. Sheets off, new ones on, bed made, done deal. Anything else we can do for you? I was like, damn, Damn. that was that was quick. And I know I I appreciate it. And I went to tip the guy. He's like, nope, on us. We were so sorry. Is there anything else we can do? I'm like, no, no, but kick ass. So of course I wrote them a five star review because it's it's the response to the to the negative situation that they turned around a hundred percent. Yeah, that and, and I that is as it's like it's like <laughs> I love that. They're like, I just wanted a new pillow sheet and then you get all these new covers and everything. It's like, all right, well, thanks. I just <laughs> yeah. Polish. <laughs> but it's definitely a principle. I think it's lost. I I, I it's, it, it blows my mind. I don't understand it, but I do believe it, it is definitely a loss. So like people don't want to they're scared or something of, of, of just accepting ownership, fixing it and moving on. Like it's just people yeah. are going to respond very, very well when you say my bad and let's move on, you know, yeah. or or address. And even if it's not, I mean, because <laughs> there are those shit people that will just complain just to complain. But as long as you stay professional, you know, it's it's you're going to be able to get a lot of great reviews, even if there was a mistake involved. And I, I, I truly believe that. You know what what was the funny thing i had a client recently that had a a bad review come across and this is one of those like the 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 ones that annoy us on the restaurant side of it the most are the ones that the people don't say anything how's your meal oh it's great how's everything oh great no problem they leave thank you very much and they go home these motherfuckers this is the worst experience of all time i think my food was undercooked this was dirty it's like you guys all you had to do is say something we would have done everything it takes to make you happy you didn't say anything so one of my clients gets a review like this. They took pictures and here's my, my, you know, my roast beef sandwich. Just look at it. It's horrible. It, they'd have been like half eaten. It's like, all right, it's been eaten. It's all over the plate. Of course, it's going to look like shit. So um, she was very, and I go on her Yelp uh, page and you can see the, the previous Yelp reviews and they're all negative. Like, I don't think she had one review over three stars. It was all one or two. And oh, I hate this place, I hate this place, I hate this place. And I was like, okay. So I got with the owner and I said, you know what? And he said, I don't want her back in. I honestly, I don't want her back in the door because she's a liability at this point. She's super negative. She's impossible to please. 
so please. And he went way overboard with the way he worded it. I was like, okay, you got to tone it down. You can't go that crazy. But yeah, I agree. <laughs> Let's write up something that's that's a very uh, uh, truthful, honest, we don't want you back in review. So I did a response. I wrote it out. It was about a paragraph. Thank you for uh, for, for coming in. We noticed that that uh, you, you're based on your other reviews, you're incredibly hard to make happy. So uh, we agree that this should be your, your final visit here. And we, we hope you find someplace you do like in the future. Just you're just not welcome back here. And he's like, hell yeah, post it. So he was like, oh, you sure? I was like, trust me, people will resonate with this because you're being truthful. You did everything you can. You weren't like, you know what, screw her. We did everything we could in our power to make her happy. I think they even comped the entire meal. She didn't pay a dime. Oh my gosh. Still did this. So he's like, you know what? It, and the, it's rare, but that kind of consumer does exist. So we posted it. I put it on my Facebook page and I said, hey, what does everybody think of this? Did we do the right thing? And there was like 75 comments and every single one of them had our back. They're like, yep, people have gone overboard with the, the nicer a bar restaurant is, the more they can push, yep. the more they want back. And it's like, oh, well, you you caught my entire meal, but you didn't kiss my boots on the way out. So one star. So it's like you give them an inch, they want to take a mile with it. It's just that. Yeah, yeah. It's, so it's it's surprising when you when you do everything you can, you finally push back in a respectful way. People totally understand, and everybody was like, "Hell yeah, good job! I'm glad you said that." Yeah, that's fantastic. What do you think is the biggest mistakes that the bars and restaurants are making now? Even like working with you, what do you see where there could be the biggest improvement or the biggest mistakes that really frustrate you? And you're like, why are you doing this still this old school way or this still yep. trying to stay on that? Kind of tell us a little bit about that. It's, it's when they don't learn from their mistakes. And I have some clients that make the same mistake, the same review. <clears throat> I don't even have to walk in the door. Neither does a consumer. Because when you read these reviews, the same thing. Service was slow. Service was slow over and over, over the course of months, mm -hmm. years. I'm like, you guys, fix it. Like, what yeah. are you going to do? Obviously, know there's a problem. I haven't been in the door in a year. I know there's a problem. I know that the service is going to be slow here. So what have you done to fix it? Well, we're interviewing managers. Okay, great. What are you doing today to fix it? And this kind of stuff goes on forever. And it, it's like it's like this plague that's that just like that's how that place is. Mm -hmm. And they're like, well, that person on the review, they were exaggerating. Okay, great. They probably were. I'm with you. But you pissed them off enough to write that review to create a new Yelp account. They have zero friends, one review, no avatar picture. They created an entire account just to bash you online. So you piss them off one way or another. So own it that something isn't right and fix it. And that's the one thing that there are a lot of, I, I, my clients are pretty damn good about this, but I have talked to people that are like, I just can't win on Yelp. I mean, these people are all, it's all bullshit and nobody's telling the truth and fuck them. I just don't want Yelp. I'm like, you, you can't have that attitude. You have to realize that you are pissing people off. Whether their review is truthful or not, you got to fix what you're doing wrong. 100% <laughs> agree with that. What do you, kind of talking a little bit now on the marketing, more the content creation side, What's been, what's the most effective tool for restaurants these days? I mean, cause obviously I'm video based. I, I've always, I've always wanted to create, I, you could do so much in video with, with restaurants, but it never seems to be like, there's always a disconnect. I'm trying to bring in, they, they want to do their own thing versus hiring a video production company and, and creating something pretty dynamic, a commercial and advertisement for the restaurants I, from my experience. But what do you think is the best content that is being used right now in, in for marketing and restaurants? Well, I have a, a saying that I love and it's be the show, not the commercial. So when people advertise, when you promote, when you put flyers out there, you're just self promoting. And the, the other kind of uh, similarity I make is if there was a TV commercial that showed non channel that showed nonstop commercials, anybody watch it, promotion, 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 buy my shit, blah, 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 buy my snake oil. Nobody would, it just, it doesn't exist yet. That's the approach people take to try and get people in the door. So if you're entertaining and you provide content that actually has a subliminal, yes, it's in my bar and everybody probably knows it's in my bar or maybe my signs in the background or something that's subliminal, yet you're providing value, you're providing entertainment. That's where it's going to go. That's where this entire industry is going. And people aren't going to, and the people that are still doing flyers, and which by the way, a flyer is the most expensive, least effective way to advertise. Plain and simple, by far. Yet people still do that almost exclusively some places, do nothing but flyers. 
And not only do they, the people, it doesn't resonate with people because they're like, human nature does not like to be advertised to. Mm-hmm. They want to be entertained. So, you know, that's, that's me too. I'm the same way. So is everybody. So the minute you see flyer, 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 you like self-promotion. This is you know, valueless. This has nothing that I'm interested in. It's vague. It has something to do with a party that you do three times a week. Why do I care about this one? Right. And they keep doing it. It got so bad to where you probably know this, but Facebook will censor the reach. So will Instagram. They, they, they have, have computers that, that crawl that page, that picture, and they know whether that picture is a flyer or a photograph. Yep. It does immediately. So if it's putting in the flyer bucket, your reach is going to get censored so far down that almost nobody's going to see it out of the box because Facebook is smart as hell. And they know that people that does not resonate with people. And that's that person has an agenda that is a business trying to promote. And they're not providing content. They're providing an advertisement. So if you put a photograph of a great looking burger, great looking sandwich, whatever, that your reach gets wider and wider and wider because that is value. That is something that's not necessarily self-promotion. You are, but you're, you're also providing uh, a value. So when Facebook started doing this, all the restaurant owners were like, I, I can't believe Facebook is doing this. this is such bullshit. I can't believe no one sees my posts and they follow me. No one's seeing this stuff. Well, let me, let's look at your posts. Here they are, flyer, 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 flyer. But great, yeah. Do, are you interested in that? Because nobody else is. Mm-hmm. And and Facebook doesn't want to end up being MySpace. So that's why they made those such a narrow audience is actually going to see that stuff. So so Facebook and Instagram actually are uh, uh, valuable, and they actually are something that people want to go look at, not something that's just like Jesus Christ, look at all this crap. <laughs> so true. So true. Man, there's a bunch of new places opening up, seems like, as it's growing. I mean, I'm out here in Gilbert, Arizona. A bunch of places are open up there. Uh, what is your favorite kind of s- spots that you love going to? Or what's your, you know, when you walk into something new, you know, and you're like, they get it. Like, what what are some things that you look for and that, that you just, you absolutely love going to and being and, and having that experience at that restaurant? Well, I, I used to be like a dive bar only guy. And like I said, with my with my upbringing, I was just like, I didn't want anything to do with anything that was not divey and gross. But now I can appreciate everything that everybody's doing from like from the dives, which I still love to like the Sam Fox concepts. And he does an amazing job of branding and creating, a, a, you know, a culture and environment for success. He's he's the man at that. So um, I do have quite a bit of, of appreciation for kind of everything. We usually stick to our little box of Old Town Scottsdale, and for the reason of there's so many new places popping up along around there that we I like to go to new places, regardless of what really the concept is. Right. If it's new, I want to see it. I want to see what somebody else is doing that's brand new, that they could be doing something different, that if they are, I want to know about it. So, we, um, you know, anywhere from we'll go to TT Roadhouse, which is a complete dump in Scottsdale, to City Hall, which is a really nice oh, steakhouse. Oh, I love City Hall. Best steak. Yeah. The Kansas City... Uh, the Kansas City cut or the Kansas City cut, something like that. I, I, I've been there once and that's what I got. And it was, oh, my God. Yeah. yeah that. <laughs> wow. And yeah, so that I guess the answer to your question, I really don't have a specific place that I like. I just want to know everything about everything. Right. No, that's fantastic. Um, dude, I, I mean, I I can't tell you how much i appreciate you coming on and i mean is there anything else that you think that we would want that people would want to know about uh, either when, when it comes to creating content uh for their marketing ads and and i mean actually yeah let's talk a little bit about that like where do you see video playing involved in in all this for you on 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 the side of restaurants on the side of bar marketing where do you see video being be involved and useful for that well, video is is so much more valuable than than photos are, just because of the fact that, based on how how Facebook and, and Instagram is going to treat them, they're going to have a wider audience just because of the video, and video is where everything is going. And um, so, if you want reach, and the whole point of being being uh, uh, putting yourself on social media is reach, you want to hit the most amount of people possible. So, if you start out with a photo, you're already kind of handicapping yourself into a smaller bucket. So, when you do video. You're going to hit a wider audience, make sure that video, like I said, is entertaining. And uh, I think one of the most important things you can do that I think I touched on this a little bit before, but as long as you have an entertaining concept of something that could potentially go viral, I would tell all my clients, do everything you can with the possibility of going viral. Is it something that's so interesting on a national scale 
that someone would want to watch it and tell their friends and share it. And very few people do that because it's, it takes creativity. It's not easy because to come up with a concept and to do people are like, I'm not a creative guy. I just don't know. And fortunately creativity is free. So if you do think a little bit about it, get, get a brainstorm session together, put something together. Um, my girlfriend just turned me on to this video. There's a, there's a, a group called the try guys and they are a group of dudes that does that. Like they, they try random things and they film it and they go out at night and they do whatever. One of them was they had to wear, um, ladies high heels for an entire night out in LA <laughs> and how uncomfortable their feet were. And they're all dying by the end of the night. And they just, they tried like, um, uh, uh, corsets on and they have to go out in the night and it's not all goofy stuff like that. But the one that I liked was they go to a bar in LA and the, the challenge was to try the, the national drink for every single state. So they had 50 drinks that they had to try whatever their national drink was. They, they gave it a shot. And of course it got funnier as it went because it got more and more loaded. Right. And the, the whole thing was it, from my perspective, it was, a an advertisement for the bar they were at like this they, they really quick like hey we're here at, at it was called the abbey which is like a famous gay bar in in uh, like west hollywood somewhere right. Right. and uh, they said we're at the abbey we're trying this thing blah blah that's the only time it was mentioned so there was a sign i believe there was an abbey sign in the background or some other like a coaster or something else that had their branding on it i don't even know if it was done on purpose but the whole video these guys had get millions and millions of views for their video so the value that the abbey got for that one shoot was way way better than any other like come check us out for happy hour here's a picture of our drink you know right that was that was not everybody has the the advantage of having the, this group of dudes who does this in their backyard for sure but the possibility of doing something like that that would potentially go viral anybody can do that stuff well exactly and i think you hit up a it's it's sort of like you don't directly you're not directly doing a video for you but you're indirectly being in that video right so i find like i mean i don't know about you but like when i watch things like like a movie or a um a, a show or or like for example cheers remember cheers right everyone wanted to go to the bar in boston and cheers right like you know it wasn't the actual bar but like it was just like that's what like like being like into something where they, they, they recognize that place. They want to go visit because they want to go visit that place, you know? And, and, and I think that's, it, so, you know, I, I, so it kind of leads me to this. So one of the things that I'm doing is uh, I, and I just shot the first pilot and hopefully it, it I think it's going to go great. Cause it's, it's pretty funny, but, um, and maybe, maybe know some places where we can go and, and check this out. But, I partnered up with this guy. Uh, he uh, his name is Kyle, and uh, he's the owner of Athletes Brand, and it, he works with just a tremendous amount of professional athletes uh, from all from all different sports. Um, and and he's 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 trying to obviously expand his content. And I'm really really excited about partnering up with him because we created this pilot show where we're going to kind of put out where it's just one of those little things where. He's going to go to like a, like a, it's called, Hey, want to go get some breakfast burritos? <laughs> and, <laughs> and then so we, but we could change it. We could do like different things like, Hey, you want to go grab some coffee? Hey, you want to go grab like some fall, you know, like just, yeah. just different things. But, uh, but it, all essentially is, is that he goes and surprises, uh, a, an athlete in their home, just walks in and we'll be like, Hey, let's go get some breakfast burritos. And so they get in the car and then they're driving to breakfast burritos. They have a conversation. They, they go through the drive through order the br breakfast burrito, bring it back. They're still having conversation and then they're, they're eating it. And then they give their reviews <laughs> on the breakfast burrito. And that's the, that's the only concept that we have. But like, like I, I, I freaking love it just cause it's, it's, it's hilarious. It's just cause we're, it's a fun shooting. It's a, it's an easy thing, but you know, it's only like five, six minutes long, very quick, but hopefully, you know, those are the type of things that'll go viral. But like, we would love to like go to like do different things where we just can go to a restaurant and be like, Hey, you want to go grab some, you know, I don't know, some sushi, <laughs> you know, like just yeah. some, some random shit. But, uh, you know what, the, 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 the use of media nowadays is so incredibly powerful that everybody's stuck to a screen hundred percent of their life. Yeah. We, uh, so this is a quick story. We were, uh, okay. So there's a, there's a, 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 a movie, actually like a, a series on Netflix called Goliath. I don't know if you saw that or not, but I, I, I've actually wanted to watch it. Is it good? Okay. So watch it. It's amazing. Okay. It's a 
uh, Billy Bob Thornton. He's like a, mm-hmm. a lawyer who's like a drunk and kind of down on his luck, but he's, uh, he's, he's an amazing lawyer either way. It's, it's filmed in Santa Monica and it's shot mostly at the, the, like the shitty motel he stays at in a bar next to it called Shay J. So this is like predominantly in the series. It went for two seasons so far. We watched both of them. We happen to be in LA. We're like, hey, let's go to Santa Monica and go check out Shay J. So we go down there and we're just like uh, walk in. And of course, the inside of it is, uh, is, is a set. So it's not the, the real, the one yeah. you see in the show is completely different. It's just giant space. The real bar is like this itty bitty <laughs> little tiny dive bar, which dive bar slash steakhouse, which is weird, but it works in LA. So hey. we go there and we're like, we don't want to be the tourist. It's like, Hey, is this the Goliath place? So we did shut up and we sit down in the bar and, <laughs> and the place, it's like noon on a random day. We sit down and like, man, how do they get this many people in here? There's gotta be 10 oh bar my. stools and four tables. That's it. They're all taken. There's people keep coming in the door and they're looking around and like, we can't even sit down here. So we get talk, we get overhearing and turns out like everybody in the entire bar is talking about Goliath. They're all here because of the show. Because of the show. Yep. And I was just like, damn, that really is that powerful. And I didn't want to be the one to say it. But then finally we asked the bartender like, Hey man, is this really, is it is blown up because of the show? He's like, you have no idea. Like, this is insane. That stuff is very, very powerful. Yeah, that is, that is, that is I, I couldn't agree with you more on that. And that's the just the power of just going out and trying and doing something, create. Like you said, I mean, it's one of those things like, like the guys, the try guys, they just do funny stuff, entertainment stuff. Someone's going to like it. Someone's going to do yeah. it and just go out and do it. I mean, yeah. freaking how did Jackass become so popular? Just because they were doing Jackass shit, you know, right. and, and, and people loved it, you know, and. Yeah. It's just, it is pretty amazing. So, dude, what do you got? What do you got going on next as we wrap up here? And 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 definitely, I know you got to get going. But uh, what do you got next going on for you? That uh, you got the book coming out. Uh, what else you got going on for you? Yeah, the book is next. Um, I've been doing some speaking engagements here and there. I'm probably going to do more of that. Um, Nightclub bar convention is in March, and hopefully, I'll be speaking at that one. And uh, I, I'm, I'm a lot better. I, I suck at speaking, but I'm a lot better at it. If it's, if it's it with my, you know, my people and around my industry, <laughs> right, people right. That too, and they know exactly what I'm talking about when it comes to relating to a restaurant. So we'll see where that goes. Um, I just got published in bar business magazine for the third time. I just submitted my fourth article. So oh, wow. I've been a, kind of a contributing author to them for a while. I'm just trying to get more exposure on a national level and I'm, expanding business into the Los Angeles area, like I talked about, but a lot more. So we're going to LA once a month or so and making connections over there. And I made some great ones so far. And, uh, in, in the, the one time we've been there in the last month, we've made some great progress. So I think being relevant in LA and especially we end up in the Hollywood area, that's where you make huge connections. And some people love it. Some people hate it. I happen to love LA and I love that whole sunset strip area. Right. And uh, it, that's that's where you meet the people that make you go global, that make you the, a national brand. And that's that's half why we're over there. We're half over there because it's a touristy area, like we talked about earlier in this thing. Mm-hmm. It's really touristy, yet those bars have no clue how to even show up on Yelp or TripAdvisor and Google. They just don't even think about that, which is completely crazy to me. But it's 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 a market that I've identified that's that valuable to have. Uh, that is amazing, man. Well, we're going to have to grab a drink sometime. I'm a big, big, big whiskey drinker, scotch. So oh, yeah. you'll have to show me some of the best places to go. And so I'll get out there in Scottsdale and uh, we'll get some some good stuff. And it's on Let's me, you, it. man. Let's do it. But, hey, I appreciate you coming on. And once again, just uh, where can people find you? Uh, BarMarketingBasics.com is where all my content resides. Uh, my Facebook is at, I think, Eric Schellenberger, all ease. I'll spell that one word. So um, I think I hit my friend limit on Facebook, but you can always follow me. And uh, my Instagram is the same thing. I think it's just at Eric Schellenberg. Fantastic. All right. And I, I feel like I'm hearing that music. And uh, so it's that time to go. But uh, hey, everyone, join me on the next episode. Please make sure to hit subscribe on the YouTube um, and the notification button. And so that the, that way you're going to be able to know when the next show comes up. But uh, thank you again. Thank you again, Eric. And uh, talk to you guys soon. Later.